God be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. Hey, everybody. God bless you. I'm glad you came by today. I want to do a study real quick. I want to pass a little nugget that I think is important to you, important for me. Uh, and it was talking about the fact is that uh, we've been talking about the, 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 we walk by faith daily, not by sight. Daily, we walk by faith. We just shall live by faith. And, and you know, I've been dealing with some people talking about, you know, the debate about whether this particular uh, doctrine of faith this kingdom that we've been studying and continue to study the kingdom of God. Uh, some wants to, you know, those who deny God want to sit there and say that, that, that you, this, this, this is not a reality. Well, it's not, it's not cardinal. It's not fleshly. It's not, it's not physical. And we're not talking about the physical. We're talking about the spiritual. We're talking about the fact is that uh, God is a spirit that's in John 4, 24, and those who worship him must worship in the spirit of the truth. And then those who deal with the cardinal side focus on whether, you know, your color of your skin determines whether this is this particular type of religion. Some again try to say that uh, there's a this this forgotten uh, religions that died out and, and because of the color because we know the origin is of a particular race and we want to get back into that worship and say that's real. Uh, what the other thing is fake and I, you know, I, I can just tell you that I'm not focusing on a, any, the kingdom of God is not focusing on the color of your race. The kingdom of God is not focused on any particular group of people. The kingdom of God is focused on those who believe and receive Jesus Christ as personal Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ, first of all, if somebody wants to sit there and get, well, yeah, he's white. Well, you know, there's a, there's a picture that was drawn by Da Vinci, right? He even painted them up in the, in, in the cathedral in Rome. And, and, and then there's paintings so throughout history where people sit there and say, this is Jesus Christ. Well, so the problem is Jesus Christ did not come from Europe. I didn't mean no harm. I'm not trying to squeak by his hand. He didn't come from Europe. He came from a place where, you know, the the, the sun kind of burns a lot. You know what I mean? And you want to have, better have some suntan or you better have some melanin in your skin to deal with that. Uh, he, he wasn't blind. He, there was no blonde hair, blue eyes. The, the Vinci was just painting his, 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 his desire. And then somehow some people made that white and, and or pink or whatever you want to call it. But the bottom line is all that's, let me tell you something about the flesh. It is a perishing thing. Every last one of us. All of us who live in the day, 100 years from now, you will not be here. I can tell you 100 years from now, not as you are today, maybe in your glorified body, you, you'd be so blessed to, to, to be caught up. But if all things stay the same for the next 100 years, you will not be here, neither will I. That's just reality, all right? So you wanna get into this, you wanna, based on the color of your skin, you go ahead. I'm not looking for a God that only created or did with one particular color of skin. I'm looking for a God that is God of all things, God almighty, not restricted to any selected group of people. And you know, one person was sitting there talking about, well, the scripture said that you are his, the Israel are his chosen people. He chose them. He chose one man named Abraham. He cut a covenant with Abraham. And he gave a covenant that was a generational covenant. But if you go to Genesis 12, when he told him to get away from his land, get away from his father's house, I'll make you a great nation. And all families of the earth shall be blessed. All nations of the earth shall be blessed. That talked about if all means all, that's all different types of colors, and locations. It's all, all means all. I don't know what else to tell you. Do the math yourself. The, the Old Testament is Genesis chapter 12. I'll put it up there so you can see it. 
so all nations shall be blessed. That was the intent from the beginning. And the thing about it is to pass a message, God chose a man and then his descendants to carry out the interaction of God with man. That started off with the Old Testament. And it was all talking about the coming of a savior who was born in a place called Bethlehem, which is in the region near Africa and other places you call Middle East, or you want to call South Asia or somewhere there. You know, it was in that area. Uh, that, and, and the thing about it is even the Jewish people, not the Jewish people, the Israel, Hebrews, uh, uh, Jacob's children went into Africa, 75 people, or 70 to 75 people, and they came out with a huge number of people, millions, as some, some people recollect, in millions could be calculated, but it was a large group that came out. Well, here's the problem with a large group coming out. They get went in with 75. Uh, they, they married, Joseph married, an Egyptian. Uh, that was what we said. And I can imagine that a whole bunch of married people uh, that were African descent. And I can imagine that they all came out African descent. Uh, you try. You be somewhere for 400 years and just 75 people think that it's just those 75 people. Look, kids and cousins, they, they, they made a million people. No, it doesn't. So that's, that's just, that's just ignorant. And the same thing about it is that what region the Israel is. And you got to know Romans. The Europeans came in, the Romans, you know, they, they wiped out Israel in 70 AD and took them back to, to Europe. Uh, so I... I'm pretty sure that Jesus was not a European. So Leonardo da Vinci was just his guidance, his desire to, to paint. And he painted what he, only what he's used to. That's how that happens. So you think that's what it's like that. But if, what I want to talk about is just even that is the fact, let the words be your guide. And, and, and understand that you walk daily by faith and you walk daily by faith. You got to understand that there is a, it's critical to walk daily by faith. We talked last Sunday, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, that's substance. And what I'm going to focus on the fact is that you want to be able to draw that substance, but faith is the substance. And I was sitting there, and I had a vision when we were studying it last Sunday. Was the fact is that I had a vision of like a, a bag strapped around my from, my, from my shoulders to my side, and that it was in that, from that bag, I could scoop out things, right? Some kids you look at it as a sore, right? You know, but, but to scoop out for what I need, there, there was substance in the bag. And, and that vision, turned into God was revealing to me and I was talking to my sister about it was the bag is really my spirit right faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God and we talked about the fact is in Mark chapter 4 about the parable of the sower Satan comes immediately to take the word that was so where in your heart he come to take it because it's he, basically he's trying to take it from the place where you're supposed to pull from you pull from your heart, from your spirit, the substance, and you do that substance then be manifested in the, in the in the physical realm. But it starts first in the spiritual realm. That substance and faith in God, God deposited. Even the scripture we're talking about that every man received the measure of faith. That measure that, they, and even talk about the fact is that even your faith is a grain of mustard seed. You can speak to this mouth and the shell removed. So you have a, 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 a measure of faith to draw the substance out and allow that substance to manifest into your life. Manifest substance of healing. Manifest the substance of, 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 of living the things you need to live. 
The Bible said the just shall live by faith. We walk by faith, not by sight. And the thing about it is because there's a war going on for what we see. And if we start focusing on the importance of meditating, that's what Joshua uh, 1 a said, meditate that word day and night. Our Ted Jesus said, when he told him the Lord's Prayer, give us this day our daily bread, that substance again, that substance to survive. If we're going to live by faith, the scripture says we live by faith, then we need to understand that just like I live from the substance of food, but I live by the need for water, I live by breathing air. He said, you also live by faith. Walk by faith, not by sight. And, the, and so therefore now, another reason why I'm saying it's so important is because there's things worn in your mind. And that's why I want to read it. This is uh, Romans chapter 7. And check this out. It says right here in verse 14. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am cardinal, soul under sin. For what, for that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that I do. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me, that is my flesh, in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. That's what I'm saying. You can hug up on your color, your skin, all you want, but in your flesh, whether you're black, white, red, blue, green, whatever, in your flesh dwelleth no good thing. Thing. And I think that's why I have all these wars and, and these, these different debates and different angles and stuff. Because the people are trying to rely and lean on their flesh. And in their flesh dwells no good thing. That's what the scripture says. So if you, you, you're basing yourself being proud because of your, your, your flesh, your, your race, uh, he said, dwell is no good thing. That's what the scripture said. Now you can leave this scripture if you want. You can leave this, this faith if you want to. But I, I wouldn't recommend it. But that's up to you, of course. Amen. So you go to a place where you can relish in your flesh. He says, for to will is present with me. <laughs> but how to perform that which is good, I find not. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Now, if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwells in me. I find then in law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. I find then in law, huh? Read again, that when I do good, when I do good, evil is present with me. Meaning there's something when you're trying to do good, there's something that's trying to tell you, no, we don't want to do that. Huh? Think about it, right? Something is, 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 is rising up against your act of good, act of doing right. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. That's my spirit man. That's your spirit man. But I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Oh, wretched man that I, oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So then, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God. But with the flesh, the law of sin. That's what I'm trying to say. There's a war going on in our minds daily. And the only way we can overcome it is through the word of God. You know, the scripture even says, for the weapons of warfare are not cardinal, but mighty through God for the pulling down the strongholds, casting down imaginations, 
and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. You have, we have a war that's going on. When I want to sit there and you know, you as anybody else, you know how you just want to enjoy the hallelujah. You want to enjoy, you had a victory, you had a promotion. You know, you, you had something that you accomplished. Do you, do you know how quick there's something that's trying to distract you from that joy? Something trying to distract you from that victory. The other words is, is, is I, I remember some, uh, there was, a, I think, a Pat said a, a, a Greek writing in which the conqueror would, would, would go down the street and everybody is praising the conqueror. He did great, he won this war, he won that battle. And then the, the, the general, the commander of that army has someone riding in that chariot with him by choice to whisper in his ear while he's hearing all that praise and all that stuff saying it's a fleeing thing. Don't get wrapped up in a fleeing thing. Don't get lost and stay in the, in, 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 in the euphoria of what's going on. Well, my point is this, that when you wake up every morning, that's why you want to give God the praise. I ain't talking about giving no color, no more skin to get that out of the way. I'm talking about God, the Spirit, God Almighty to you. Thank you, Lord, for waking me up this day. Thank you for giving me the ability, the power, the sound mind to go forward today. You know, the Bible, I like the word of the other scriptures say that God has, God has given me a spirit of fear, but a love, power, and a sound mind. Because you know why you need a sound mind? Because you got a war going on in your mind. And that war, people could be sitting there and you smiling all in faith, but in your mind, there's a war going on. We see that in comedians and everything else, but they're sitting there focusing on, man, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> I seen them, you know, those, little, those uh, movies or TV shows or comedy shows where there's the person is, is is in reality talking to somebody or seeing something, but they have this this voice going on, and you can hear that voice, and that voice is speaking uh, of their thoughts for that moment. Well, that's what happens in life, that you really do have a war going on in your mind. You really do have a battle going on in your mind. And the whole purpose is for you to not meditate on things that, that, that goes against the knowledge of God for you. See, even when people want to sit there and reject this faith, they, they, they need to really listen to the parts that they, I, I wish they could just grab hold to. And they want to hold on to the fact is that they're, they're, they, they, I don't know what you hold on to. You hold on to because you're scared. I, I, don't, I don't know. But what I'm saying is, listen to some of the knowledge and the wisdom that comes from the Word of God. It's talking about the fact that it's keeping yourself motivated, stirring yourself up in Him, knowing that He loves you, knowing that He'll never leave you or forsake you. That is the faith that we're standing with. He's the one that, that died on the cross. He demonstrated love by dying on the cross. He had died on that cross. He said no man could take his life. He laid down freely. And that's what we need to understand. He gave you the ability to be free and the ability to be free is to say, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Huh? But I already have the promises of God. And I already have a container to pull the substance that I need to operate the things of God. And that's what I want you to do. That's what I want you to look at. So that's the nugget I want to give you today. I want you to understand for me, not for you then, but for me, that it's important to build myself up daily, hearing the word of God, pulling that substance, that substance of joy, that substance of peace, that substance of being more than a conqueror, that substance that says I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, that substance that allows me to stand up against the challenges of life and say, I walk by faith, not by sight. Huh? I got the ability of God in me. Huh? He walks with me. He talks with me. And I don't need to hear something that's opposite of what I'm hearing from him. And that's one of the things we need to know. We need to know the word of God so that when we hear something that's contrary to the word of God, you can sit there and say, that ain't, no, man. 
that, you wish that would happen with Adam and Eve. When Eve was sitting there in the garden, you know that devil sitting there saying, you will not surely die. She should have said right then and there, and this is what you're supposed to do when you get something that goes against the knowledge of God, is sit there and say, uh, thank you, have a nice day. Because you be the judge whether to obey you or God. I choose God. God said that, I mean, just think about it. Look at the, I, I put that up there, Genesis chapter three. When the devil said there and said, you will not surely die. That was the opportunity for man to sit there and say, it is written or it is said to the voice of God that if I eat that fruit, I will die. Now, you be the judge between you and God, because you're not God. God is God. I read obey God and obey you. You want to eat the fruit, you eat the fruit. If you can eat it. If you have access to it, you need it. But I'm just telling you right now, I'm not going to eat it, because he said, if I eat it, I'm going to die. As a matter of fact, you know, it's almost like this. If somebody said that a, a cup is poison, and somebody says, sure, it's not poison. poison. You won't die if you drink that. You say you drink it then. You bad, you bold, you drink it. You, you, you go ahead and, and, and go ahead and drink it. Drink the whole cup. Drink it. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to tell you guys. Is to learn to listen, meditate on God's word and understand where his word is coming from. Understand the, 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 the path that he's trying to lead us to. Understand the ability to listen to the voice of God daily. Because I'm telling you, how we start listening, I'm gonna tell you, and that, and that devil, just like in Genesis, that devil came in subtly and he deceived Eve. And that man followed behind Eve and disobeyed God's word. And I'm sitting there saying is, God has said, Jesus Christ said, I can't get life and life more abundantly. So let's, let's go for the abundant life. Let's meditate on the word day and night. Huh? And let's realize we walk by faith, not by sight. That's all that matters. That's all that matters to me. That should be all that matters to you. We're going to walk by faith, not by sight. That's the nugget I want to give you. I, I'm sorry if it took maybe 30 minutes, but hey, it's worth it because I think somebody need it. God is not giving you the spirit of fear, but the love, power, and the sound mind. I put that up on the script as well. But I guarantee you, when you meditate on that word day and night, not for legalism, <laughs> but for living. And you'll find out that God is a blessing. The Word is a blessing. And that's why you can stand in the secret place. You know, what scripture mom said, y'all hear it at the beginning of the video, the video says, this is the day that the Lord has made. I rejoice to glad in it. It's Psalms 118, 24. We should understand this is the day that the Lord has made. And you've heard this message. Rejoice and be glad in it. Because God is talking to you. Amen? All right. Hey, I hope you enjoyed the video. And I hope you come back and uh, we'll do it again. Amen?